These are photogenic power lights. They're old uh, monolights, but they're actually still made today. The ones that you're looking at here are about um, at least 20 years old. What I really enjoy about these is uh, how well they've been built. Um, so in anything that you're going to take a look at here that you might think is metal is actually metal. Um, so the housing is quite robust. The uh, bulb is a little bit unique as well. There are a couple of uh, different manufacturers that make bulbs like this, but um, the strobe itself can be kind of a fragile item. And on some uh, monolites, uh, you'll find that the strobe can be exposed, which means when you're putting a modifier on or taking a modifier off, or if you bump into it, you know, there's... There, for some people, there can be sort of this, um, you know, uh, amount of anxiety that you're going to break the, the strobe. So the way these have been designed is there's actually, a, I don't know what it is, plastic or plexiglass um, housing that is over the strobe itself. So you don't have to worry about uh, banging it or knocking a speed ring against it. Um, it's a really tough uh, surface that protects it. The other thing you'll notice is that it really sticks out from the housing of the strobe. And uh, the reason for that is supposedly the light not only shoots straight forward uh, out of the end of the strobe, but it also shoots out of the sides. So if you can imagine that a softbox is over this, then the light is going to be radiating, you know, kind of out to the sides as well as forward uh, to kind of, you know, fill the softbox, if you will, uh, from all different angles. Um, anyways, I, uh, I'm a fan of them, and um, I really like the, the robustness of them. The way these things are controlled, it's uh, pretty simplistic, um, is on the back. And on the back, uh, there are some uh, two sliders. One slider is going to be to control the power of the flash, and the other slider is going to be to control the power of the modeling light. Um, the other notable things that you'll see on the back here is that there's a switch that allows you to turn on the modeling light. Um, there's also a switch that allows you to turn on the strobe. Um, in the upper left-hand corner is a test button. Uh, immediately to the right of that, that little orange circle is the uh, built-in slave. That built-in slave is actually pretty powerful. Um, and the way you sync these to your camera is through the sync port which is in the bottom and in the middle. And that sync port is, uh, it's a phono plug. Phono plug is uh, very common. So what you'd end up looking for is a uh, cord. You can get them at Adorama, B&H, uh, Midwest Photo, and probably on Amazon. Um, but you want to get phono, phono plug on one end. And on the other end, you'd be looking for most likely a PC port. And PC ports uh, typically plug into many types of uh, radio triggers. So uh, no mystery in terms of how you're going to get it synced. Uh, many times when I'm using these, I might be using them in conjunction with another flash. If that's the case, I only need to trigger one flash, If especially if I'm inside. Uh, the slaves are um, sensitive enough that they'll fire on their own. In other words, if I have two of these set up and another flash maybe on my camera, um, and the flash on my camera, when it fires, it's indoors most likely easily going to be able to trigger these. So that's a different way to get them triggered as well. Uh, a couple of other things to point out here while you're looking at it is um, immediately underneath the strobe, so be between the bracket that holds it to the light stand and the strobe itself is where you connect uh, your umbrella. And that's all metal. It is uh, very uh, substantial, very sturdy, and um, it can actually take a really, really large shaft for an umbrella, which means if you have a larger umbrella, like a five or six foot umbrella, this, this type of mount you could consider using that for. Um, the way that you uh, can articulate the head up and down um, is pretty secure as well. There's actually the handle on this is a ratcheting handle so that makes it easy to, when you get into an awkward situation, uh, to pull it out and adjust it and get it to go, you know, as tight or as loose as you want. Uh, finally, on the bottom, there are two screws. One is a kind of a set screw that you can 
tighten with a screwdriver if you need to, but the main one you're going to be using is the knob. And why that is nice is because if you take a look at the top of a lot of light stands, the the area that you want to secure the um, the pin into is it, it can be at different spots on different light stands. So between these two types of uh, positions that you can put the, the the main knob, you can you can get it to work with uh, you know with your particular light stand. Uh, this strobe also has a, another, uh, at least the one I have, has another unique feature, and that's um, something called a power light uh, remote control. And th these were used, uh, I think Policy Buff used them on some of their older uh, white lightnings. Um, and uh, what it allows you to do is it allows you to control both the flash as well as the modeling light intensity. So the the same settings that you would have on the back of the individual strobe are available to this. This uh, remote is tethered. And the way it's tethered is through a, a CAT, and I use a CAT6 cable, but um, if you're not familiar with these, those are the cables that go between uh, a computer router and, and your computer. Um, sometimes you see them in a work environment or, you know, some homes, like for example, we'll, we'll use these if you want to hardwire a computer directly into your modem or router. Um, it, it looks an awful lot like an old telephone wire, but the old telephone wire is not what you want to go for. You want to go for uh, CAT wire, um, CAT, and in this case I use a CAT6. Um, they come in all different lengths and they're not, you know, it's very inexpensive. Um, and so the reason I like this remote is because a lot of times I will position these uh, strobes above my head and if I want to make fine adjustments after positioning the strobe above my head then uh, I don't have to get on a stepladder or get on a um, uh, you know, any kind of seat or stool or, um, you know, something to give me some advantage to be able to look at the back of the, the unit and make the adjustments. Um, so they're not that common. Um, they're also, if you can find them, not that expensive. Anyways, I, uh, I, I really, um, really am a big fan of that. And then the last thing I would point out is that um, the way the speed ring attaches or the way the reflector attaches is kind of unique as well. So um, you actually take those two little ears that are at the top and you push them in with your hand. And then that there's three tabs, one at uh, 12 o'clock, uh, one at maybe 4 o'clock, and one at uh, maybe 8 o'clock. And those tabs kind of come in, and then you can actually put the circular uh, speed ring or the circular um, uh, reflector directly on it. So it's very easy to get something on. It's very easy to get it off. Because it's a circle, uh, in the case of a softbox, it makes it very easy for you to rotate the softbox so you can get it into any kind of position that you want. Um, sometimes with speed rings, you have to there's a whole set of screws that you have to unscrew or screw in in order to make that adjustment. But with this, uh, you can actually just twirl it, and it works uh, works quite well. So that is just kind of a quick rundown of uh, Photogenic um, Power Light. The 1500 is actually a 600 watt strobe. Um, Let's see if I can go back here. The 750 is actually 300 watts, so roughly half the power. Um, the 1500R, the R stands for the ability to use a remote. Uh, the 750 actually is not capable of using that remote. Uh, this thing here, and uh, you can see at the bottom is where it plugs into the actual strobe. Um, Uh, I like the the very robustness of how the thing is built. Uh, these these would have been made in uh, Youngstown, Ohio. Uh, currently, Photogenics is um, uh, based just out of Chicago, so they're still manufactured. You can still buy them new, um, but you know the used ones. These things don't wear out. Um, so. Uh, you know, getting them used can actually be a, a fairly cost-effective solution. 
Uh, a lot of people aren't going to be interested in them because they like automation. A lot of people may not be interested in them because they're a little bit heavy. People may not be interested in them because you can't really use them remote unless you have um, uh, some sort of outside battery system. Those aren't hard to get, um, but it's certainly not as convenient as having a battery built into your, uh, you know, a lithium-ion battery built into your strobe. So again, a big fan, and uh, just trying to spread a little bit of information about these. When I got my first set, uh, there really wasn't much uh, to go by, so I'm just trying to share some of my thoughts and hopefully help people out.